<laughs> okay, John, so welcome back to Mayday United. Thank you. How excited are you to be back at the football club? No, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, I've got fond memories here, obviously from you know quite a while back. Um, but obviously, I have a connection here that I've always stayed in touch with with, with, with Bill Williams. So um, when 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 they spoke to me, um, it, it was an easy conversation, really. Um, it was just a case then of whether or not. Uh, we could all agree on what we thought was best for, for, for the club, for me. Um, fortunately, we, we found the common ground, and um, I am. I'm absolutely, you know what? I'm absolutely delighted about coming back here. Is it? It seems quite fitting that you're here 30 years on from uh, winning <laughs> the uh, conference title. Yeah. Uh, um, as I said, I, I have fond, fond memories of that. Um, they were a good, you know, a really sort of good time for for me. Um, Great achievement for the for the football club, and uh, you, you know those those memories. You know, however old you are, however long you do stuff, I think that that those memories never go away. Um, and as I say, it, it was a, a connection as well that, that I made with with the club and Bill, um, and Bill's obviously still here. So um, we've kept in touch and, and talk not so all the time, but pretty regular. And you know when 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 we concluded talks, I was as I said, I I, I was really de delighted to to come back here and see if we can help this club to to pro keep progressing. How important has that relationship you kept with Bill been in uh, getting the deal done? Massive, because you know um, I think that when you have a, a friendship. Um, and you know, all of us in, in whatever you do, we, we all know, know lots of people. But I think that you know, this particular situation was a friendship. So I, I think that makes it a little bit easier when, when you when you talk to people. You're not trying to work them out. You know what they're like. There's no <coughs> excuse me. You don't particularly fall into a trap of saying, well, he's telling me something. Is that exactly how it is? You know, really, what he's telling you is going to be basically the the truth and. So the, the the actual talks weren't difficult, you know. It was just a matter really of whether or not we we could agree um, that it was the right thing for both parties. So what was it about the role that attracted you to uh, accept the offer? Well, you know, um, I, I I decided to to, to, to finish out and out managing uh, at Barnet. Uh, it was on my mind at the start of the season, if if I'm being honest. Um, and as we got towards the sort of Christmas time, you know, I, I, I actually made my mind up. I had a long, a long talk with, with the staff at, at Barnet and told them what I was going to do. Um, I then had a, a talk with, with, with the chairman, um, who um, sort of tried to talk me in, in, into staying, because once again, I'd known him for a long time. But I've made my mind up that, that I, I thought it was the, the actual right right time, not the right time to finish with football, but the, 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 just the right time to, to to step back a little bit. And there was various reasons for that, that we, which are not that important in, in this particular interview. But I think that once I've made my mind up to to, to, to do that, um, he wanted me to stay on to help the new manager, uh, who was a temporary manager, which was my coach Darren Curry. Uh, which I said I would, but once I felt he was comfortable, I knew that it was the right the right time for me. Then. And I didn't know what I was going to do. With the greatest respect, I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, so I thought I, I might, for the first time in 40 years, have a little bit of time off. That's how I felt. And basically, I had a bit of Christmas off. You know, a little bit of that time off. Um, I had quite a f great respect. I had quite a few calls. I spoke to various clubs and I was just waiting I wasn't going to jump in just waiting for the right thing to come up Bill spoke to me about coming as head of football to be in charge of all football on on and off the pitch um, um, I bring with me a, a terrific scouting system which has found some fantastic players for me over the years um, and the role just seemed the right one for me and um, the club is in a really difficult situation can we save it? I don't know. Um, it's going to be a uphill battle. I'm going to be quite open. But I think the biggest thing is 
the challenge of um, trying to maintain the progress that they've made, but in doing that, give it a, a stronger base than perhaps it was on at you know this time. So it can push forward again. I don't see any reason that, that it can't. It has great support. It's, I think it's in a good area uh, to, to attract players. People think it's a, a bit far out, but, but London's not far now. We know everything is everything now is different than, than years ago. So it was just the right time, right place, right job for me. So you touched on it there. Have you been set any targets in terms of this season? No. Um, not, not at all. You know, I might set targets myself. You know, but. The, the, the first thing that, that we, we need to do here is sort of as quick as we can over the problem next week, try and assess the players that we have. I think the playing squad is very thin. Um, we, we need to perhaps try and bring in one or two players, but it's, it's, it's really funny that we can all bring in players, but it's bringing in the right players. And I, I hate bringing players in to fill a gap, I'd sooner wait for the right player. Um, so that's going to be our, our intention to try and find the, the right players. I don't know how long that will take us. Um, we're going to do everything we can to try and win as many games as we can. But, you know, I think short term success is false economy in the end. You know, you can have short term success, it all collapses around you. I think you've got to have a, uh, a stable background to, to build on foundations. Foundations are weak, the whole thing's going to collapse. Um, I've always, any club I've been in, I've always done the same thing, it's the foundations have got to come first. You might need a short term burst, but by, by and large, foundations have got to be strong. So you're head of football, which is a new term for us, could you just explain what exactly that would entail sort of day to day? Um, it's running anything to do with, with the football team, um, who comes in, who goes out, um, playing style. Um, I brought someone in with me, Hakan Hayratin, who worked with me at Luton, who used to play for me. I'm very big on working with people that know how I do things. Um, Darren Curry at Barnet had played for me um, on two occasions, had worked with me as a coach before I took him as a uh, first team coach. Um, so it, it's any, anything that, that involves what happens on the football pitch, who comes in, who comes out, scouting system, how it's run, how we play. Um, is, is, going to, is going to be uh, down to me. Um, I'm, a, I'm an on-the-pitch type of person. I like to be at training. I'm not a manager that doesn't go out training. I've never been a manager like that. And in this new role, I'll be exactly the same. I won't necessarily do it all day, every day, because I have people that are working with me to do that, and I'll be working hard on other things. But I will be out there, and I think the influence Will, will be exactly the same as it's always been. So alongside Hakan, is there anyone else that you'll be bringing with you? Uh, not at this particular moment. Uh, longer term, yes, yeah, there, there, there will be, but uh, at this particular time, uh, me and Hakan, uh, but we will be using Simon. Um, I was quite um, surprised when, when we met and, and I spoke to him about him. He wants to play, which I'm happy with. Uh, but I want to use him in that he wants to, he's happy to be involved in, in the coaching side. Uh, but it's interesting, he doesn't have any coaching experience. He has no badges, he's not done any coaching experience. So really he's learning, um, but that's fine. And I, I think we can teach him. And in terms of, you touched on it earlier as well, the scouting, almost a blank canvas up here, I think really to build like something for the club to uh, have that base of players that they know about. Yeah, um, when I was here, all them years ago, that's when I had the system in place then, um, and I think I, I just, left, I think I brought Warren Barton here. Who I think ended up playing for Newcastle for four million pound. They sold him to Wimbledon. Um, that system's been underway for many years now, and I think all the clubs I've been at, I think we've sold lots, quite a few players, found players, sold players for, you know players that have gone on and been international players. So that, that system is fantastic and that will continue here. So on a Saturday, what can the supporters expect on the pitch from uh, your team? Um, <clears throat> hard working, uh, hopefully exciting, um, and hopefully winning. But, you know, 
and I said it. I always say the same thing. I, I'm not a. I'm not a believer. I, I, I haven't. Had, I don't sort of profess to have a magic wand to come in and touch everyone, and, and we're great. The team is where we, we, we where we are for a reason, and you know what we have to try and do is find out the reasons that it's happening and eradicate those reasons, be it you know in how we train, how we prepare, or how we recruit. It's, it depends, and once you find what it is, you, you you can change it or try to change it. At the moment, I don't know exactly what it is, but what I do know is that as soon as we identify uh, weaknesses, we'll, we'll try and eradicate them. But you know, I, I, I want to be um, an exciting attacking football team. Um, it takes it takes time. You know, as I said, it, it, it isn't something that you know. I, I'm not a sort of short-term success type of person. I don't. I, th I think that's, as I said, I, I think it's a recipe for disaster short-term success. I think you've got to try and get something that's sustainable. When I first went into Luton, uh, I went in towards the end of the season, a bit like this. So I had good time to prepare for the following season. Um, my time there, it wasn't many games, but we weren't very good. Uh, but the second season we went up and we were unbelievably good. So it's about preparing in the right way, I think. How important would it be to change the home form, which has obviously been the problem for such a while here? Well, I, I think that's the, the, the key for, for lots of clubs. You want to be good at home. I think that if you're not so great away, people can sort of understand that. I don't. I think you can be good at home and away myself, but I think the home form has, has been disappointing. Um, I don't know the reasons why. Um, sometimes, you know, people can freeze playing in front of, the, of their own crowd because of the expectation, but if that is the case, with greatest respect, sometimes if you can't change the mentality, you have to change the playing group. It's, you know, that's not anything that, that people wouldn't expect. You know, you have to have people that can, can, can handle any sort of pressures that, that come at home. I always say the same thing, we have good support here. and. Uh, do you want to play in front of a thousand people, or do you want to play in front of thirty thousand people? I know what I'd say to do. And if you want to play in front of thirty thousand people, you've got to have the mentality to deal with their expectations. That's why the best players are the best players, to be honest. And lastly, looking ahead to the weekend, a bit of a baptism of fire, I suppose, away to top of league late in Orient. Yeah. Well, listen, all games are tough in this league. With the greatest respect to whoever you play. I saw the game here against Maidenhead with a similar position to, to ourselves and that wasn't easy, that was tough. So all games are tough, I don't care what we play, I'm not one of them people that, you know, we're playing these today, we need to do this, we need to do that. I don't do that, I, I think it's important that, that the team has an identity, whoever we play we have an identity, this is how we play, this is the way we do it and we're going to work hard at being good at it. You modify it a little bit now and again to, to suit certain situations, but by and large, uh, I'm going to look to, to try and find which is the best way for this team to play. Uh, going forward, that may change, but I can only work with what I've got at the moment, so I've got to try and find a system that suits them. But as quick as possible, I'm going to decide which way we're going to go, and I'm going to play that way to create, to create our own identity of how we play. And if you do it regular enough, people become very familiar with it. You know, chopping and changing systems that doesn't help.